water is still coming out of the faucet in my kitchen. The electricity still turns on. I buy food at the supermarket. It seems inconceivable that our modern world could collapse. Every society that collapsed thought it couldn't happen to them. The Roman Empire thought it couldn't happen. The Maya civilization thought it couldn't happen. The Byzantine Empire thought it couldn't happen. But it did. And it usually creeps up on you unforeseen. At its peak, the Maya civilization numbered more than 10 million. They had astronomy. They had the only writing in the New World. They had great art. They were the biggest game in town. They are the equivalent of us in their, in their era. These city centers were supporting 25 to 50,000 people. So they were very well adapted to their, their surroundings, and they were able to grow. But they grew too much and exhausted their resources. Growing population, meaning growing demands on the land, deforestation and soil erosion, which tied into warfare. There was chronic warfare among the Maya city-states. And then their climate suddenly changed. There were these series of extended droughts, and those droughts just kept hammering away and hammering away. You lose your forests, you lose your soils. If you lose your soils, you can't grow anything. And if it stops raining, then forget about it. The end game for the Maya must have been horrible in, indeed. It's highly likely that there were also periods of starvation. It's, it's a truly hideous and ugly way to die. The Roman Empire faced many of the same problems that we face today. It was kind of a precursor of our globalized economy. In just a few short centuries, Rome built an empire that stretched across three continents. As it expanded, the requirements for simply feeding its cities and feeding its army became so large that the empire couldn't generate enough food energy, enough grain, to adequately meet all its obligations. So there was a constant fiscal crisis and financial crisis. As resources ran out, their empire collapsed. The city of Rome itself went from a million people down to perhaps 30,000, and that was the largest city in Western Europe at the time. Civilizations in the past have lost the fight. I mean, they, they have collapsed as a result of the inability to deal with several different events going on at once. And so, you know, I think the takeaway is that, honestly, we're not that special. Easter Island, one of the most remote places in the world. It's hard to imagine that a civilization once thrived on such a barren island, but it didn't always look like this. The Easter Island used to be covered by a forest of dozens of tree species, including the biggest palm tree in the world. But as their population grew, so too did their demand for wood. As they gradually cut down more and more trees, the trees didn't grow back rapidly enough to replace the trees that were being cut down. So sometime in the 1600s, the last tree was cut down. You saw all of the classic signatures of collapse. The population plummeted, there was starvation, and essentially they turned to cannibalism. The question is, what was that person on Easter Island thinking when they chopped down the last tree? The pattern is clear. Civilizations that grow too large and consume too much damage their own life support systems. As resources run out, they begin to fight each other over what little is left. Then they either starve or leave. But in our case, where can we go? I think Easter Island is the perfect metaphor because it's this small, fragile island sitting within the Pacific Ocean. It's very remote, and, and it, it no longer was able to sustain the population that lived there. It, it's no different than Earth being this small planet in a vast galaxy. about that cartoon movie that was made about the Beatles music, Yellow Submarine. There was a creature in it. Hey, look who's back. Full speed ahead. Its head is a funnel that functions as a vacuum cleaner. I'm a bee of swallows. Lovely. Suddenly, it's run out of things to point at. There's nothing left, so it's looking around for something, and finally, it looks down. It sucks itself up, and then we have a blank screen. There we are. The moral of that story? 
By grabbing everything in sight, we'll end up destroying ourselves. And by 2050, the population is exploding. The rainforests are disappearing, and nine billion of us competing for ever scarcer resources. A bad situation made worse by widespread drought and huge migrations of people. Life is changing for everyone, including Lucy. My parents both got sick the winter of 2050. It was a horrible flu that year. It seemed the viruses were getting worse each passing season. I kept them comfortable, and I'm glad they were at home and together when they died. After that, there was nothing to keep us in San Diego. Josh and I decided it was time to leave. We were excited. Josh had been offered an amazing job in New York, working on the sea barriers designed to protect the city from the rising seas. There wasn't much room in the truck. We took clothes, a few books, and 50 gallons of water. Everything else we left behind. GPS 2100, please select your destination, New York City, calculating safest route. We headed north across the Mojave Desert. By dusk, we were on the outskirts of Las Vegas and greeted by mile after mile of abandoned suburbs and acres of golf courses turned to dust. The silence was eerie. Well, by 2050 at Lake Mead, one of the great reservoirs of the southwest on the Colorado River uh, has finally gone dry. There's not enough water to meet human needs. People in Las Vegas had depended on Lake Mead for almost all their water and power. Well, Las Vegas, I would imagine, is gone. With a drought like that, you've got a city in the, in the desert, and it's going to be really difficult to live there. When we got closer to the strip, we were lucky to hook up with a convoy headed east. Las Vegas was a strange sight. Most of the hotels dark. All those neon lights gone dead. Sin City had pretty much folded. From there, we drove through Arizona. Break, rising out of the desert, we saw something wonderful. These huge new solar plants, 50 square miles of reflectors. They hadn't been built soon enough to help Las Vegas, but one day they were supposed to power the whole West Coast. It was comforting to know. There's tremendous possibility there in the desert Southwest. There's a capacity to produce uh, solar power and, and move it to where the great population centers in the United States are. route heading east today is Route 40. I think it would be almost impossible to do this journey unless you had some form of intelligence as to what areas are lawless or dangerous. I don't think strangers are going to be very friendly. By the time we got onto Route 15, we were grimy and tired. The scene in front of us had jolted us out of our days. Hundreds of people packed the road, all of them streaming out of the southwest heading north. It felt like the Dust Bowl all over again. Think what it would be like if we have millions of neighbors to the south heading north because they don't have food and they don't have water. They shouted at us as we drove past. Molly was half out of the window, catching everything with her camera. Suddenly, a man grabbed her arm. He had a gun and pointed it at Molly's face. Get out of the truck right now, he yelled.